chapter 16 deals with the anatomy of the heart, the structure, what it looks like, how it's shaped, the chambers, the valves, the vessels, all that kind of stuff. Chapter 17 has to do with the physiology of the heart. So basically, the heart is a pump. It squeezes, it pushes out blood. So its primary function is to pump blood through the blood vessels and provide every cell in the body with oxygen and nutrients. So every single cell in the body is affected by the heart's function. The heart squeezes, pushes out blood, blood travels to the cells. It's not very big, it's about the size of your fist, weighs less than a pound. It's located in the mediastinum, we already talked about that, remember in the body cavities, the mediastinum was in what cavity? Thoracic. Thoracic cavity, very good. The base of the heart is actually this upper flatter portion of the heart. So don't think of base as bottom, but in the heart, the base is the flatter portion. So up here, the top of the heart is the base. The apex, apex is the pointier part. So the apex of the heart is down here, this lower pointy part. And that lays at about the fifth intercostal space. Did you guys, when you did vital signs, did you do the PMIs or the apical pulse? Right, so what was your landmark for the apical pulse? Left mid-clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. So what you're hearing for your apical pulse is the apex. We also call it the PMI, the point of maximal impulse. Basically what you're hearing and what you're feeling, sometimes you can palpate it, is the apex of the heart. So the layers of the heart. The heart has a couple of different layers. The innermost layer, epithelial cells, is the endocardium. Remember, endo means within. So the endocardium is within. It also lines the valves and the vessels. So the inner lining, it's coated with endocardium. Myocardium, myo means what? Muscle. Myo means muscle. So this is the muscular layer. It's the thickest of these layers. And this is the layer that allows it to act as a pump. This is the layer that will contract and squeeze. So the myocardium is the muscle layer. And we're going to talk a lot about the myocardium. Epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart, and it forms part of the pericardium. What's pericardium? Around. Around. Very good. <laughs> so here you go. You have an inner layer of endocardium. You have a thick muscle layer of myocardium. And then the epicardium is this blue line. That's the outer layer of the heart. All right. Now for the pericardium, there's a couple of different layers, so I'm going to try and draw this the best I can. So if we say this black line is our myocardium, all right, that's our thick muscle layer. The pericardium is a sac that surrounds the heart, and it has a couple of different layers. The layer that sits right on top of the myocardium, what was that? Not endo, epi, right? So the blue layer would be epicardium. This blue layer that sits right on top, of the ep on top of the myocardium is a serous membrane. Remember we did serous membranes? And what was the deal with serous membranes? They secrete fluid, very good. What else? What else do you remember about serous membranes? How many layers in a serous membrane? Two. What were the two layers in a serous membrane? Visceral and parietal. Which one was closest to the organ, stuck to the organ? Visceral. In the heart, the visceral pericardium is the same thing as the epicardium. Pericardium, again, it's a serous membrane, so it's got those two layers. The innermost layer is stuck directly the organ. So in this case, it's stuck directly to the myocardium. It's either the epicardium or the visceral pericardium. Same exact structure. This visceral pericardium will turn and fold, and it'll fold back on itself. So once it folds back on itself, now you have an outer layer. And that red layer then would be what? Pericardium, but which layer of the pericardium? Parietal pericardium. And then what would be in between the blue and the red, the visceral and the parietal? Fluid. And because it's around the heart, we would call it pericardial fluid. OK? Make sense? One more layer. There's a tough layer that surrounds everything on the outside. And that's called the fibrous pericardium. And the fibrous pericardium is tough 
dense connective tissue, kind of like a capsule around an organ. It anchors the heart in place, and it gives the parietal pericardium something to stick to. All right, so the innermost layer was what again? Endocardium. Then you get to the myocardium, which is the muscle layer, allows it to act as a pump. Stuck to that muscle layer on the outside is the epicardium. We also call that the visceral pericardium. Then there's a layer of fluid. Then there's the parietal pericardium. And outside of that, containing the whole thing, is the fibrous pericardium. Okay, so the pericardial space filled with pericardial fluid. And again, the purpose of the fluid is what? Reduce friction, right? The whole purpose of the fluid is to reduce friction. The heart's always beating, so we want to make sure it has a nice, smooth sac to glide in. Now, if that sac around the heart, if that pericardium becomes irritated or inflamed, then you're going to end up with something called pericarditis. When the sac becomes inflamed, instead of gliding nice and smoothly back and forth, it starts to rub. Those layers will start to rub against each other, and it's very painful for the patient. When you listen to somebody with pericarditis, you may hear something called a friction rub. So instead of the normal dun 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 dun, you'll hear and that's a friction rub. It sounds like sandpaper rubbing together. If pericarditis becomes severe, the natural response in the body is for the tissues to start secreting fluid. And once those tissues start to secrete fluid, if they secrete too much fluid, then you end up with something called a pericardial effusion. An effusion is simply a collection of fluid. That's all it is. Excess fluid, if that effusion becomes too big, you can end up with something called cardiac tamponade. And what happens in cardiac tamponade is fluid starts to accumulate in that pericardial space. Fibrous pericardium is not stretchy. It's not like a balloon. It's not just going to keep expanding and expanding. So where is all the pressure going to go? The pressure is going to go onto the heart. It's going to start to smother the heart. So it's going to impair the heart's ability to contract and to pump. When that happens, we call it a cardiac tamponade. So if fluid starts to build up in there, it has nowhere to go. It's going to start compressing the heart inward. How do you think they would treat this? First of all, how do you think you would find out? What do you think you would hear with your stethoscope? What you're going to hear is muffled, exactly, perfect word, muffled heart tones. The heart is basically underwater. So what you hear in your stethoscope is muffled heart sounds or muffled heart tones or distant heart tones. They take a needle, they stick it in their chest, and suck out all the excess fluid and then treat the cause of whatever's causing the excess fluid buildup. If it's recurrent, sometimes you see that in cancer patients or trauma patients, they'll do something called a pericardial window where they'll go in and they'll actually cut a little square out of the pericardium so the fluid can leak out and not accumulate and smother the heart. So look at all those new words you learned. Pericardial effusion, friction rub, cardiac tamponade. You're going to be cardiac experts by the time I'm done with you. <laughs>